What's up guys, Paul from Paul Scar X Fit. For those of you that don't know, I'm a former Division I track and field athlete, number two ranked professional duathlete in the United States, and number 25 in the world. I went to Wake Forest University on a track scholarship where I earned my Bachelor of Science in Health and Exercise Science. Today, I'm gonna to show you four exercises for your abdominals using only a band. Not only are these exercises effective in developing a strong abdominal rack, they also work all of the muscles of the body synergistically. This is the shirt that I wore to work today. This is a barbell apparel drop fitted hem, my favorite shirt to wear at work and when I work out inside. So it's got nice fitting around the arms. You want your arms to look bigger, fits nice and tight around the chest and nice and loose where you want it, the belly. Let's check out this pattern. These are the few shorts. They are awesome, my favorite pair. I didn't think I was gonna like the Urban Camo, but I absolutely love it. I'm gonna link these in the description if you wanna check them out, Barbell Apparel. Now, is band choice important? I think so. You can either choose a band that's just rubber, or you can choose a band that I use that is nylon covered. There's the rubber band underneath, it's covered by a nylon sheath. In case it breaks or snaps, it doesn't hurt me. If you're using a regular, band that is just made of rubber, you run the risk of it breaking eventually over time and then possibly injuring you when it snaps. I'm going to link these covered resistance bands in the description so if you need to get a pair or want to get a pair, you know where to find them. Now before it gets too hot out here, I want to get straight to the abdominal exercises. Number one, the drop step rotation. Number two, the pal-off press. Number three, the wood chop. And number four, the discus thrower. Now the bonus for you, I'm gonna show you all four exercises, but I'm also gonna show you how to do them more effectively. Secrets of the trade. The first thing you need is an anchor point. You can use any anchor point that you want. I'm gonna use this railing on our parking deck. Very, very simple. I'm gonna take my band and I'm gonna take one handle. I'm gonna loop it through the other handle. Then I'm gonna take that handle, loop it through again. So now I've got a nice stable base. I don't have to worry about the other handle. Now that we have our handle in place, we want to create tension. So I'm going to have one hand on the bottom, one hand on the top. I'm about chest level with the band, so make sure you set up properly. I've got my feet about shoulder width apart, maybe slightly less. With this exercise, you want to brace your core first. So I want to brace and then I want to take a step. And as I step, I'm going to rotate and you'll see my hip move with my shoulder and with my arm. So it all moves at the same time to get into position. So if you're in the right position, you should be straining pretty hard just like I am. You can also flex the chest when you get to this position and flex the arms as well. We then step back to the same spot. If you start to creep forward, you're gonna run out of tension with the band. We then take a step to the other side. It's a diagonal 45 degree step, rotate around. And if I want, I can take my foot and also spin and then back to center. So in real time, step, rotate, squeeze, and hold. Step, rotate, squeeze, and hold. This is a fantastic exercise to get all the way back to the external obliques, the love handles that give most people a lot of trouble. The second exercise is the pal-off press. You have the same exact position that you had for the drop step rotation, except this time, I wanna face away from my anchor point perpendicular to my anchor point. I'm gonna grab my handle, same exact position. I want my hand that's closest to the anchor point underneath because that's the one that's going to be pushing when I rotate towards the center. So hand closest to the anchor point underneath, other hand directly on top. I wanna to brace my core. I want a solid base at my hips and feet, shoulder width apart, rotate around. So I'm gonna rotate, rotate, rotate until I get to my center line. I'm pushing with my hand closest to the anchor and I've got my abs cranked. I wanna pull in slowly, keeping abdominal tension, press all the way out in a straight line, hold, rotate back. Now, if I rotate back too much, I lose tension. I wanna rotate back just before I lose tension and then start again, pull in, press out, rotate in. So you can see I'm working the transverse abdominus, internal oblique, rectus abdominis, main abdominal wall, all the way back, if I can, to the external oblique. I'm also working upper body at the same time, and legs. So you do get a nice contraction at the glutes, 
the quads and the hamstrings. So it really integrates the entire body. Don't forget to do the other side. Remember, hand closest to the anchor point is the hand that goes underneath. All right, number three, the wood chop. Now there are two different types of wood chop. One is chopping high to low, and two is chopping low to high. For my purposes here, I don't have an anchor point high enough to do a high to low chop. So I'm gonna do a low to high chop. So you have to adapt to your environment, do what you can. If you do have a higher position, anchor in and hit that high to low chop. And the high to low chop just involves anchoring up high, grasping, same exact way you did for the pal-off press, and then taking your ax, your band, rotating it down like you're chopping into wood, squeezing nice and tight in the abdominals. It's the exact opposite of what I'm gonna show you now, the low to high chop. All we wanna do, instead of anchoring at our midpoint, I wanna take my band and I wanna anchor it at the low point. I'm gonna do the same exact thing, one handle through, two handles through, and lock in. I still have the heavy band. This is a really, really tough position. I'm gonna be taking that band, stretching it as high as I can, and when I stretch it further, the tension is going to increase. Same rock solid position. I wanna have my hand closest to the anchor point underneath, opposite hand on top. I'm gonna to pretend like this is an ax, and I wanna pull it out of the wood that it's in. So I've already chopped into the wood. I'm now gonna take my hips, and I'm gonna start by initiating the motion with the hips. So I initiate the motion with the hips, the arms come with me, and then all the way up as high as I can go. I've got a lot of tension on my right leg, which is the leg closest to the anchor. And of course, my entire abdominal wall, internal, external obliques, transverse abdominus, the whole deal. I can also, if I want, go back a little bit for my ax, right? So I'm gonna use the opposite side now to press down into it. Press down into it, rotate the hips, up on the tiptoe, all the way up to the high position. Real time, chop, extend, chop, extend. So pay attention to the foot position. You'll see my opposite leg is rotating with my body. Rotate the other, rotate, and rotate. Keep the belly button pinned to the abdominals at all times. Keep your lower back safe and get the most abdominal contraction that you can. Of course, as always, don't forget you have two sides. Do the other side. Don't ask me a question in the comments saying, should I do the other side? Of course you should do the other side. Otherwise, you're gonna be asymmetrical. You'll have one side that's more developed than the other and start to develop all sorts of issues, especially in your lower back. All right, for the fourth and final exercise, the discus thrower. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, what in the world is the discus thrower? And I've shown this one before, so if you followed my page for a while, you know exactly what I'm gonna do. Except this time, I'm gonna use my heavy band. You can also do this by using an extra heavy band, putting one band through, sliding it all the way down. So I don't have as much tension, I can go way, way out to do this. That's fine also. It's much more difficult if you wrap your handles together. So I'm gonna go back. I've got my handle anchored nice and tight. The discus thrower is exactly what it sounds like. You should be positioned very, very similar to the way that a track and field discus thrower releases the discus. We're gonna start in a nice neutral position, so I've got my feet a little less than shoulder width apart. I've got my hand closest to the anchor, and I'm gonna rotate back, and I'm gonna start my rotation from my abdominals and my hips. So I rotate back, and you'll see, I keep tension. My hand moves with my body. So hand, shoulders, torso, move at the same time. So when I do that motion, I fully engage my abdominals. I also have my rear delts on the hand side. My opposite arm is gonna rotate along with me. So I'm barely gonna move. I've got as much tension back. I'm all the way into the love handles. And then I'm gonna rotate and squeeze from my chest and my abdominals. So you can see how difficult it is. Ooh, and I'm already starting to cramp up in the back exactly where I wanna work but you can see how difficult it is if you lock the band up at the handle. So in real time, rotate, start to create tension like you have a rubber band. Squeeze around, rotate back, throw that discus nice and hard. And of course, big squeeze all the way 
around your entire waist. Make sure your chest is locked in place. It is mainly an abdominal exercise or a core exercise. I use them interchangeably, but it also is an upper body exercise. So now you have four exercises that you can do while you're on vacation to absolutely shred and peel your abdominals. Now, a lot of you are gonna say, ah, oh, it's in the kitchen. Of course it's in the kitchen. You have to have good nutrition, moderate nutrition, a decent diet in order to get the abdominals to show. But like I tell most people, if you just work in the kitchen and you just diet and you don't exercise, you're not gonna have a solid rack here. I've done a lot of work on my abdominals over the years. I haven't just eaten right and not worked out. So obviously, it's a combination of the two. It's not neuroscience, it's not brain science, it's common sense. You eat right, you eat moderately, you eat smart, intuitively, and of course, you strip the fat off and the muscles will show. But if you strip the fat off, and I've said this in my prior videos, you're gonna look exactly like you did before you started working out. So if you didn't have abdominals before you started working out, and you just diet or you just do steady state cardio, you're gonna be a smaller version of what you were. So you do have to work the abdominals. They don't just magically appear out of the blue. And a lot of people will tell you it's only made in the kitchen. That is BS. And you know on my channel, I do not bullshit around. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. I am melting out here in the Carolina heat. It's 100 degrees and it's obviously a lot hotter on the parking deck. So if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe my channel. I will see you all the next time. Let's go.